Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Field. The title of this video is What's Your SPL? Well, let's define SPL. SPL obviously is sound pressure level. Now, pressure in rooms can be produced by all kinds of frequencies, lows, mids, and highs. Obviously, the low frequencies produce greater pressure because they're bigger waves. So, we have a pressure level in your room that you listen to, and there's plenty of apps on the net that you can get in uh, the Apple Store has many. Just get one of the apps and set your phone by your listening position and watch the pressure levels that you are comfortable listening at. And that'll give you an idea of what your personal preferences are. Many, many years ago, Stereophile did a study and they come up with an average of about 83 dB SPL that most people in two channel rooms were listening at. Now engineers might go a little bit lower, they might go a little bit higher, but there's ranges there just like reverberation time. It's subjective and also very importantly, it's a big factor in the resolution of your room, okay? So we have all kinds of usages, two channel, home theater, mixed live, higher pressure, less resolution, always. The more pressure, the less the resolution because the more pressure just creates more issues within the room, which are distortion. And they accumulate, you know, and they build upon each other. Modes, reverberation, noise floors, all of those issues are related and they build upon each other. Quantity is not quality, okay? I know people today are big, 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 more, 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 mas, mas, mas. That's just... It's not how we need to think about music and voice inside of our rooms. We have less pressure, we're gonna get greater resolution. With low frequency energy, we don't want it hanging around in the room too long. We want it to hit the fundamental, decay naturally, get out of the way before the next note, right? There's a whole series of energy there. So everybody has to keep moving, okay? Keep moving through the line. Get in, get out. That's how it has to work in acoustics, especially with lows. The mids and the highs all about reverberation, right? The reflections of that energy off the surfaces of the room. If we have a lower noise floor, we're going to have higher resolution. That's the goal. When we design our rooms, two-channel listening rooms, I try to get the resolution very high around 75 dB SPL, 80 at a peak. Very rarely have to listen higher than 80 dB SPL. If the room is tuned correctly, has the right amount of treatment, has the lows managed correctly, the mids managed correctly, and the highs managed correctly. If you're listening at levels over that, you're, you're listening mostly at the upper levels above that 80 to distortion, room distortion. I know it's a hard thing to grasp. I know it's a hard issue to understand, but if you're comfortable at a certain pressure level in the room, you can hear more of the music at that pressure level. That means that you've achieved a balance between the distortion in the room and your listening preference. You might find that with treatment in the room, well, you will find with treatment in the room that you can listen at lower levels because you hear more. That's what we want. We want to hear more. And doing this with the gain knob, it's not getting us more. It's getting us more energy, more energy, more issues in the room, okay? Now, granted, we need to have a certain pressure level in order to make things work. If we're having normal conversation, you know, 60, 65 dB SPL, is a good normal listening level to work with. Our, our ears and our hearing mechanism works good. If we talk slower and, and quieter, then that pressure level becomes more difficult in the room to hear, right? So yes, we have to have a certain pressure level in our rooms, but I think most of us are listening at too high a pressure level because our room has too much distortion. So let's peel that onion away. Let's get to the low frequency treatment first, then work our way up to the mids and the highs. When we get those three managed with absorption, then we add the chocolate syrup to the ice cream diffusion. 
And then diffusion takes all that and even gets rid of the room even further by making the room sound larger. We won't get into the mechanics of that, but that's how diffusion works. Diffusion is a technology to make a small room sound larger. And the beautiful thing about diffusion is it doesn't mess with anything. There's no phase issues or anything like that. If you do your homework and get your reverb times managed correctly, get the attack and decay uh, rates in the room managed correctly, and then add diffusion, it's like you're, you're listening outside with no room. Amazing, amazing technology. So what's your SPL? Figure it out and then start to take measures to lower that. Try to get down into that 75 to 80 dB range. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.